This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Sean Preston. Welcome, everyone, to today's episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today, we have a good neighbor on with us, and that is Elliot Robin of Elliot Robin Productions. What's going on, my man? Thanks for having me, Sean. All is well here, uh, here in Barrie, and hope the same's uh, going well for you. I was just saying to you before I came on, I was having a coffee on my back deck, and it is absolutely gorgeous outside. Anybody who's working right now, they're shooting themselves in the foot. It's absolutely stunning outside. So the second that we're done this show, I'm going back out there. <laughs> 100%. I might join you. So we got introduced through a few mutual acquaintances. And uh, I told you when we first met, hey, why don't you come on the show? And I didn't want to know because that makes me a little bit more curious to maybe ask some questions if I don't know uh, down to the detail. And for our listeners listening right now, they're probably chomping at the bit. So let's dive into it. Tell us a little bit about your business. So I'm the owner of ERP, Elliot Robin Productions. We're a full service corporate multimedia production agency. Uh, our focus is on photography, video production, live streaming services. And, you know, we have a dedicated team of creatives who, who care about bringing your communication strategy to life and, you know, capturing the essence of your brand and effectively communicating your messages is what we do best. So. You know, we were based in Vaughan uh, for all of my life, and I recently moved to Barrie. So now we're we're building our base here. We work all over Ontario and Quebec. We've gone as far as Collingwood to Windsor to Ottawa and Montreal. And really what started out as a passion just because I enjoy the craft became my full time business. And over the years, we've grown significantly. And like I said, now we're expanding our footprint here in uh, Barrie and Simcoe County. Very cool. You couldn't have picked a better spot, I have to say. Uh, okay, tell us a little bit. Let's kind of unpack this. Do you have a specific type of clientele? We are talking about branding, so that's pretty much straight across the board, as that's what we do as well, too. Uh, so I feel like there's a little bit of a, uh, a nice uh, correlation symbiosis happening uh, from that perspective. As uh, specific type of clientele and typically when they're coming in, they're making videos, like what are they typically doing with this content? Yeah, so our clientele varies. I mean, we have three main sectors, which are the corporate sector, the political sector and the nonprofit sector. The kind of content we create really serves as the anchor for a client. So it's a promotional video. It's a testimonial video. Basically, the first thing people see when they go on your website, on your social media, Something that sums up who you are in one to two minutes is, is what we're known for. Uh, that's why we've done over 50 political campaigns in the last five years from municipal, provincial, federal. And what we did is we created the main videos for the candidates. So they posted that on their website, on their social media, like I said. Um, in terms of the photography, we cover corporate events so that they can use that as marketing material for the future, as advertising for you know, create that FOMO effect of what people missed out on if they didn't attend. Uh, and what we started during the pandemic was our live streaming service called ERP Live. What that did is that bridged the in-person and virtual events together. So, you know, we've helped a lot, especially in the nonprofit sector, we've helped a lot of organizations continue their fundraising efforts through live streaming because they couldn't do in-person events. They couldn't connect with their with their donors. And so right. that's, that's really what we do and the use of our, of our content. What platforms are people typically putting these videos on? Typically it would be their website and Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, basically anywhere that the company has an online presence, they want our content there because it sums up who they are. Very cool. How did you get into doing something like this? You said you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. So what started out as just a, a passion, you know, I picked up the camera when I was younger and started playing around with it, making videos. And after that, I, I really dived deep into that passion. In high school, I, I did a, did a co-op at Rogers TV. 
And that really exposed me to the television world. So I had the chance right. to be on camera, audio production. I even got to direct live television. Really? And, uh, and after that, you know, I went to Ryerson or TMU now uh, for media production. And so that's really where I honed my skills. And while I was there, I officially started my business. I was running it part time while I was studying. So I was running it for three years. I started it in second year. And when I graduated, that's when my business became my full time project and year over year. So six years total, three years full time, full throttle. And, you know, I'm really proud of how far we've come and the type of work that we've produced and how much we've grown over these six years. So you talk about <clears throat> branding, uh, you know, making people feel good about about somebody's business. It's it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and, and not many people really kind of understand the true kind of definition to it. Uh, we do a lot of educating on our side of the fence. Typically, when you're picking up a new business, just because I like this conversation, so I want to bring it to the forefront. What are you typically telling the customer before they you know, kind of start to uh, maybe shake hands with you and, and, and move forward? Absolutely. That's a great question. You know, a lot of people maybe don't know or don't realize the value that video has. I mean, what we provide, everyone needs. Everyone has a phone. Everyone has an iPad. Everyone has a computer. Some sort of method to view content, whether that's on TV, whether that's on social media, you're always consuming content. So why are you hiding? Why are you not putting yourself out there? Because people make decisions every day based on the content that they interact with. And so you need to make sure that your business is doing the same. Put yourself out there. Make sure people know who you are, what you do, why you're different, and creating that high quality content. I mean, you know, you look at a, you know, a corporation, for example, that deals with cybersecurity. Well, their forte is cybersecurity. Their forte is not the marketing and the content creation side. So that's where we come in. We take that pressure off their shoulders and allow them to continue doing what they do best while we help showcase that. Wonderful. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Getting people to feel good about your stuff, getting your message out there to strangers who don't know you to get to know you the way you want to be known. It is truly a beautiful thing. And, and, and to go, to go on that, I mean, connecting, right. It's, it's storytelling. So what we do, we don't just, you know, chop, chop, create a video and here you go. We really tell your story because that's what people connect with. Whether it's a nonprofit, they want to know about a success story of, of one of the clients, right? We've worked with a women's shelter and we did a testimonial video on one of a, a survivor of domestic abuse and how the shelter helped. People see that direct impact. Same thing with, with businesses, right? Like people, testimonials are so important because they build trust because you're no longer selling yourself. You have someone selling for you. And so the story and the emotional connection is key because that's how people connect. 100%. Are there any like <clears throat> misconceptions or like myths when it comes to your line of work? That's a good question. I would say that, you know, maybe one of the misconceptions is, well, I don't need video. I mean, most people do. If you're doing anything, whether that now you don't necessarily have to work with us, but that that still does not mean you don't need content, whether that's corporate video production or photography, whether that's social media content, you need to be active, right? You need to be present. People need to see you. And so I think that's one of the misconceptions that like, oh, well, I don't need video or I don't need content. I don't need to be on social media. I'm sorry, we're in the 21st century. Whether you like it or not, you're consuming content on social media. So why aren't you putting your own out there? Um, another one would probably be that video production is is too expensive. I mean, it's not expensive because it's an investment in your business. If you're going to invest in a physical location, that's an investment. If you're going to invest in SEO so people find you, that's an investment. If you're going to invest in, in video production or photography, uh, if you're hosting an event, you're going to pay for the venue, you're going to pay for the catering. Well, you're going to make sure you're going to want to have all that captured as well so that you can look back on it. This is not something that's an extracurricular. This is a necessity. And so 
people just need to realize that. And I help them realize that, right? And I, I make it very clear, whether you work with us or not, the value that video and photo has is, is immense. And those would be the two misconceptions I have in terms of cost. Like I said, um, there are many different options. There are many different ways to get the results you want or to create the content, whether you hire an external video production agency like us, whether you have us do some consulting for you to help you create your own content, so many different options available. Yeah, I'll echo that as well. Most people don't know until they're educated that marketing is the first thing you spend money on and it's the last thing that you cut and it's not expensive if you've already carved out a marketing budget and knowing what the percentage is of your gross monthly revenue and finding your real house and go down any rabbit hole on the internet generally speaking they'll pu they'll pump you anywhere between you'll find seven and 14 percent we always recommend 10 if you want to maintain what's out there and if you want to grow your 14 to 20 the only difference is how fast do you want to grow from that perspective? And so I would, I would only argue the point of it being expensive. It would only be expensive if you went over your marketing budget, then it's mm -hmm. more than you budgeted. So yeah, it's going to be expensive. Uh, but it's storytelling message spreading. We do the same thing just on different platforms. Uh, like I said, we're complimentary in that fashion, but getting your message out the way you want to tell your story uh, and then put it on every, major popular digital media channel we use a print medium as well too uh video is a really nice touch because you can dive in a little bit more uh than than just a kind of uh, a still ad i guess you could put it that way uh but super super important um you know that's how you grow you take a look at any business out here uh that's in the medium category and their 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 budgets are on point to the percentage like i met those percentages i mentioned but they're they spend and clearly marketing works Hundred percent. It's it's key, and like you said, that you, you need to make room for it. It's not just like oh, let me just add it in. It's something that you have to account for because you know the last thing we want is for a client to you know go over their budget or to or to think oh, I didn't anticipate spending this. Well, that's why you you budget for it, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Well, and there's an ungodly, dis disgusting statistic out there on on the percentages of a small a small business failing. Uh, for, and for mainly two two particular reasons. One, didn't market, uh, didn't do marketing, and then failed to scale. Uh, so I love what you do, man. Love what we do as well, too. Uh, the power we hold, uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, and sometimes you you forget and you don't know until you realize, you know, sometimes you, you get to put that business owner's kid through school because, you know, they grew their business, they grew it the right way, the right way and you were there for every step of the way to kind of help them on that journey. It's a pretty cool feeling. 100%. The client results are what really make me happy to see. I mean, one of the nonprofits we worked with during COVID, uh, and we still work with them, but during COVID, they usually do an in-person gala and they couldn't. So we, we produced a, a full-scale live stream for them. And in one single night, they managed to raise $10,000 through their online auction. And that was through the power of our, our team, the video production, the MC, the whole, the whole production, it, it still allowed for them to connect to their audience. And that was so, you know, gratifying. I was, I was very happy to, to help that, that organization because that $10,000 is going to go a long way for continuing their mission. Very, very cool, man. So, okay. So let's, uh, we'll get off the topic of branding for just a bit. Let's maybe dive a little bit into uh, some more personal stuff. Uh, I like to have a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun on the weekend. Spent some time with mom. Had a little fire in the backyard. We made some pizzas. We have a mm. pizza oven in the backyard. Oh, okay. I had uh, flour and sauce like from head to toe. A drink in my hand. And uh, we had the tunes rock and it was a good time. So that's a little sliver of what we like to do and having some fun when we're not working on or in our businesses. And so let's ask you the same question when you're not working for your, yourself and working on your business or in your business, what do you like to do for fun? That's a great question. Uh, well, every morning I go to the gym, it gives me energy. So 
that's that's key. You know, it started out. It was very difficult at first, but you know, I want to credit my my trainer Key for really pushing me and, and getting me to where I am today. Because now, when I if I don't, I there's no way that I can't go to the gym unless there's something more important, like if I have a client shoot, um, you know, or I'm going to see family, whatnot. But I have to do that. So that's not only a necessity, but it's it's a hobby. I enjoy it. Other than that, you know, I I love listening to music. Some people, uh, people who know me would already know this, but it might come as a shock to people who don't know me that uh, my favorite artist is actually Celine Dion. So, nice. uh, yeah, it's uh, people, people don't know that. So um, that's something interesting. Other than that, I would say I like watching TV once in a while when I have the time, you know, I'm, I'm into more reality type shows. Uh, like uh, I'm really on a Kitchen Nightmares binge right now. I just oh, really? love seeing yeah. Yeah. I love seeing how, you know, Gordon comes in and he fixes things, right? Because it really shows you how when you're when you're involved in something, you can't be objective. So you need that outside person to that outside perspective to come and fix things. Um, and I guess the biggest thing that I would mention is so as a passion of mine, I've started a secondary business, which is called Eyes of E. Eyes of E, Elliot. And so what it is, is my photography uh, from purely my enjoyment, from my travels, from my enjoyment of photography. So I sell them as prints uh, on my website, eyesofe.com. We sell them as prints in four different sizes, whether you just want the print or it framed. We sell greeting cards and postcards. And really, it's just a compilation of what I love, you know, so the way that I frame it as Elliot Rabin Productions is my client's vision, because our slogan is your vision, our mission, and eyes of E is my vision. It's, it's a look at the world through my eyes. And so those, those would be my hobbies. And, you know, I, I love what I do. I'm very grateful for the life I have and for the people that surround me. And, and that's, that's what I think the key is, is just to be grateful, to be grateful every day. You know, I woke up, so I have another day to live. 100%. Be happy, treat people well. It's the key to life right there. Uh, so photography, uh, lifestyle photography? Uh, on the Eyes of E or yeah. Elliot Robin Productions? Eyes of so e. Eyes of E is mostly travel photography okay. and experimental photography. So travel photography will include my trips from uh, to Mexico, uh, Quebec, um, uh, Israel. So a lot of different places that I visited, uh, as well as, you know, fireworks. I'm a big fan of fireworks. I love photographing fireworks. So you'll find a lot of that on my website. Um, and, uh, you know, some experimental photography with some lights, uh, you might, you might really enjoy that because it's really, it's really unique. Um, I won't, I won't explain how I do it, but when you go take a look, you'll kind of, I think you'll be, you'll be, uh, very interested and, and amazed at what's, what I've been able to capture. So that's the kind of photography I capture with, uh, with eyes of E. You'll, uh, that'll pe definitely pique the curiosity for the listeners to go and check it out. You'll have to come and photograph my house at Christmas time. Cause I've got 682 bulbs. Wow. Kicking out there. You can see me from the space shuttle. That's how I like it. Uh, but, uh, more like that, you know, that, that Christmas, uh, vacation movie. With the yeah. Movie? Yeah. That is legit my house. The only thing is I didn't staple them to my shingles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we like it nice and bright. If I could put more and add more, I would. I just got no more space, you know? 100%. Well, you got to let me know this this coming Christmas. I'll be there. Yeah, come take some shots. Let's see how that turns out. That'd be pretty sweet. Put me on Rock 95 on their little page there. I'll win it. Yeah. I'll win first place. I'm going to put a couple of reindeers out there. Some people go crazy. You know, oh, hundred percent. Uh, you got to go all out. And, oh yeah. Just absolutely nuts. So I probably wouldn't win, but if you took the shot, I might have a chance. Definitely do what I can. <laughs> all right. So in life, we decide to go on a path. We try our best. We think that that path, you know, is, is the ideal path to walk in life. And, and then sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. Life gets in the way it throws stuff our way or it pushes us or tugs us. Uh, points us in a different direction and sometimes we we face life challenges we go through hardship hardships uh, i've always been fascinated on uh, human beings and their ability to overcome these 
different types of challenges and holding on to hope. And sometimes they're traumatic. Sometimes uh, it's more of a more of a hurdle. Um, but I wanted to ask you if you've ever experienced a life challenge, a hardship, you overcame it, maybe it made you better, maybe it made you stronger, or maybe you took some silver linings from it. 100%. I mean, I, I don't think there's anyone who hasn't had uh, challenges in their life. If I speak strictly on, on myself, you know, from a business perspective, I mean, you know, COVID affected everybody. And, you know, with no live events, nobody doing anything, we had to find a way to pivot. And what we did is we introduced ERP live live streaming services because it was it was another way to, first of all, continue running the business while providing a service that people needed and uh, and helping our clients who, who did, like I said, need that service. So that was probably the biggest challenge we faced because it, it took a lot of investment. It took a lot of time. The equipment is not cheap for, you know, a high quality live stream. Um, and it was just making our clients aware of that, making our existing clients aware of that, finding new clients that were aware of that. And really the other challenge I guess I faced uh, is growing the business. I mean, it, it was hard at the beginning. Like I said, it started out as a, as a passion project or, you know, I started out part-time while I was in university. And, you know, when I graduated and I took the leap to make it full time, I mean, it was challenging. It was, you know, finding clients, making sure that our our rates were competitive, making sure that the quality that we're putting out was was impeccable. And really that that growth and that journey over the last six years has has taught me so much. And even like I said, I just moved to Barry a couple months ago. I mean, I moved out. That is a big risk. And I'm glad I did it because if you don't step out of your comfort zone, then you will never grow. You know, comfort is safety, but you have to take those risks. You have to invest. Um, and, and that's where we're at. So now I'm just, I'm working hard to, you know, meet people in Barrie, connect with the community, go to these networking events, uh, showcase what we're capable of and continue to put out high quality content that makes our clients uh, happy and satisfied that they, chose to work with us. Very nice. What was it about Barry that got you to move up here? You know, it was time and time and place. I mean, I, uh, I found the right place. I knew the, the, the people who, who, who own it. And so everything kind of fell into place. And, you know, my, uh, my landlord actually loves Barry. So, um, you know, they're like, I'm so happy that you're going to be there and so forth. So it, uh, Everything worked out, and I, f I found that looking back on everything that happened in life, everything happens for a reason, right? Oh, yeah. And so, you know, going to Barry was part of the plan that, uh, that was meant for me. And, you know, a lot of the, the goals I had, I, I manifested and I, I made them happen. And, you know, I, I'm really enjoying it here. It's, it's quieter. There's less traffic. I mean, for Toronto standards, there's less traffic. Ah, um, yeah. But so I've heard from Barry standards, there's still traffic. Um, yeah. Everything is close by. Um, it's safe. I feel so safe. And, you know, I'm able to, when I need to go back to the city, right, I just hop on the highway and I go. And, you know, people ask me, oh, how's the drive from Barry? I said, the drive from Barrie to Vaughan is not, not a problem. It's the drive from Vaughan to Toronto or from Toronto to Toronto. That's the problem. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's why I came to Barrie. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. And I'm, I'm excited to see what else is, is out there for my time here. Very cool. Our business uh, circle, uh, community, uh, all those networking events, the Barrie Chamber of Commerce and the uh, Anbury's networking event and the sandbox center, <clears throat> all great circles. You'll find a lot of similar people bounce between all of those. Uh, it's a great, great spot. You're just, just getting going. So I'm excited to talk to you on the other side. I'll tell you a bunch of cool stuff, but uh, you can go do and explore here. It's a, uh, it's pretty cool. And anywhere you go to the North, it's absolutely beautiful. If you like anything to do with nature, camping, hiking, canoeing, boating, anything like that, it's, you know, it's a big playground up to the North. It's a pretty cool thing. Nice. Well, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited for you to tell me what's what's going on in, in and around Barrie. And I'm excited to explore, especially this summer. I hear there's a lot of festivals that happen in Barrie. Yeah, so. 
That's fun. Fest over the Civic long weekend in August is uh, is a banger. Put it that way. Went last year. Had been a little while. Uh, usually we're camping, right? We we're big campers. Me and mm. me and Julie. Um, and so we're we're like we're going this weekend uh up up north of Sudbury we're going backcountry camping for the Canada Day long weekend every long weekend we're pretty much we're gone except for that one and the only reason is because our daughter said uh I want to go to the Matthew Good concert we just went to go watch him okay uh, coming here for half the price and you get to go to Kempen Fest pretty cool festival a lot of local vendors um that fill up that entire all the way around the lake uh, and they got some stuff for the kids there as well, too. Um, a little Ferris wheel, the whole bit, uh, food trucks to sample and eat all that, all that good garbage food. I'll say good because it tastes phenomenal, not necessarily good for the gut. That's the weakness. That's my weakness, the food. <laughs> oh, my God. I just, it just came to mind when you, when we were, I was talking about that, then you're, you're loving, loving on it. I remember going to Boots and Hearts and my mm. parents came to watch the, the concert and i remember we were leaving and they had those uh they take the corn on the cobs and then they dip them in the butter and then they put some salt mm -hmm. on it and i just remember double fisting two of these monster corns as we were walking back to our camp campsite <laughs> and i just look over at my mom and she's just like just slicing and dicing on this corn of cob i'm holding two of them i was like the happiest person ever they were so good too oh my god did you catch the uh the northern lights this weekend no, we are upset. Like, so Julie and I are big. Um, what's the right word for that? Like astronomers or like we're into that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, even for like TV shows we watch and stuff. And you, anything action intergalactic, we're like all over it. Right. Uh, and in university, as I've never been like an academic. I, I learn better from somebody learning something and then kind of telling me uh, versus actually sitting there with, you know, pen and paper and then sitting through the lecture and then you got to go through the tests and all that kind of stuff. Just, uh, my brain works a little bit different from that perspective. However, I did get a 95 in my astronomy class because wow. it was actually that interesting to me and it just, you know, I get it. So we wanted, and we wanted to watch it. We were out there, we were watching it, but Barry, we didn't get anything here is everybody to the mm. North of us, uh, even up in uh, Huntsville, Sudbury, uh, and then my family lives out in uh, Winnipeg. We've got some other publishers out in Alberta sending stuff on social media. They got it good. They got purples and pinks and all wow. kinds of cool colors. And there, Julie and I were sitting out there and like no, no cloud cover, like a little bit of cloud cover, but we didn't get, we didn't get nothing. It sucked. <laughs> every yeah, time I... we try as well, like every time we try something, you know, the, uh, the solar eclipse, was happening i was right between shows as well too like i just finished i had like three minutes to go downstairs there the girls are up there they got little sunglasses on and they're like man this is absolute bogus we got nothing there's cloud cover we can't see anything it was dark out which was kind of you know a little neat a pretty cool mm -hmm. experience but didn't get to see the sun so every time it happens we're just getting like more and more upset because we get the shaft every time 100 percent <laughs> that's gotta be yeah like I, I i didn't even um i completely forgot that it was happening and i just i went to sleep and then i woke up and everyone's oh i saw them so i mean to be fair it kind of makes me feel a little bit better that we couldn't even see it here so i didn't really miss it but definitely it would have been nice to to see it yeah we got a bit of it last september we were up an hour and a half north of sudbury <clears throat> this is probably like oh just crawling up on about one o'clock in the morning we're on the campfire and julie and i got up to go take a, a walk away from the the campfire so we could see the stars they were pretty predominant and uh, she actually snapped a couple of photos that actually look really good on the camera but we got some green up there we got to see a little bit of it it was it was showing that night which was kind of cool wow that's amazing so um okay so i got one more question for you uh, what's one thing that you wish your listeners knew about your business That's a great question. I would say I want people to know that we're a company made up of young, motivated, creative people that care about getting your message across to your audience and, you know, 
even though we're young, we're experienced, we're capable, we're ready. And if, if people that don't know us are looking for a way to showcase their business in a high quality way, then, you know, send us a message, email us, give us the opportunity to show you what we're capable of because, you know, as, as a young entrepreneur, sometimes it's it's difficult people people judge judge me based on the fact that i'm young and say well you don't have experience or this and that well age doesn't necessarily mean inexperience and so the the key is that i care quality is the most important for me whether it's a, a small you know client mom and pop shop business or it's a multinational conglomerate that we're working with each client gets the same amount of care and support that uh, that we provide. So that's what I want people to know that that we're here, we care, we're ready, and now that we're in Barry, we're excited to to meet and connect with all the businesses here. Very cool, man. And for those who are interested in uh, wanting to learn a little bit more, uh, what's the best way that they can reach reach you? Yeah, so they can uh, they can check out our website at elliotrabinproductions.com. So Elliot, two L's, two T's, rabinproductions.com. You can see a sample of our work there from photography, video, live streaming. Uh, we also offer a bunch of supplementary services like graphic design, motion graphics, animation, script writing, voiceover, uh, basically anything on the digital content side we can do. Uh, you can also check us out on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube. And uh, if you want to get in contact with us, our number and our email is uh, all listed there. Uh, so please, if you have uh, any questions, if you just want to hop on a call, get a free discovery call, we'd love to speak with you and learn more about uh, how we can help you and your business thrive. Phenomenal. Well, it was a pleasure to spend a bit of time with you to get to know you and your business. Uh, absolutely love what you're doing, man. Uh, like I said, there's some synergies in terms of what we do as well, too. So we get it. We understand it. And the more that our business owners get it and understand it, the better it's going to be for them because the stuff works. It works in a tremendous day. It is a necessity component. Uh, and, you know, we talk a little bit uh, of educating the difference between branding and lead generation. They are two different things. Uh, but 100%. branding is such an important, crucial component to your business. It makes everything better, including the lead generation. Uh, so really excited to uh, help you grow your business, uh, be a part of our community here in Barrie. You couldn't have landed in a better spot and looking forward to potentially doing this down the line. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate you having me uh, on your podcast today. And I really enjoyed our conversation. I look forward to uh, to more to come for both of us. You got it, buddy. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Midhurst. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpmidhurst.com. That's gnpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.